this video is for those of you who want to understand functions. So in this tutorial, we are going to talk about relations and functions, basics of the functions, inverse functions, composite functions, quadratic functions, domain and range of the function, piecewise functions, odd and even functions, polynomials, rational functions, modulus functions, and logical uh, functions. So let's begin our discussion with relation and functions. What is a relation? Uh, basically, when we're talking about relation, we're talking about uh, a set of pairs of input and output values. Now, when we're talking about the input values, what are we talking about? The input values, these are the x values. Okay, at the same time, this is the domain. So, we are, we are saying that this is the pair of the input and output values. So when you talk of the output values, these are y values. Okay? Then at the same time, this is a range. So whenever you hear to say domain, we're talking about the x values. The range, we're talking about the y values. Let's say we have got um, a function to say a set of function 1 comma 4 then we have 3 comma 4 let's also have 7 comma 3 okay so as you can see the first part here is our x value this is y this is x this is y this is x this is y now they can ask you to 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 list the domain the domain in this case is going to be so we start from from ascending so it's going to be 1 comma we're going to have 3 and 7. So this is our domain. Okay, what of the range? So the range of the values, in this case, we're going to have uh, 3. We start from 3, then we're going to have 4. We only have 2. So this is our range. Okay, now, how can we map this? We can see that the x values, the ones we're calling them as a domain, we're going to put them here. We're going to say that this is x and then this is y. So to map them, we're going to say that we're going to have something like this. Then we're going to have something like this. So we put the values here. We can see that we're going to have the x values. We have got 1, 3, and 7. The y values, we have got 3 and 4. Now let's see. 1 is mapping, one is mapping to what? 4. So we're going to have 1 all the way to 4. So it's going to come from here all the way to 4. Next, we have 3 to 4. 3 to 4. Okay. Next, we have what? We have 7 to 3. 7 to 3. Now, is this a function or not a function? So, this is a function because all the values of x, they are mapping to the values of y. Okay. So, now, in short, for us to consider a function or a relation to be a function, all the input values must have an output value. Then we are going to call that one as a function. Not only that, but we should also note to say there should be only one output for each input. Okay? So, for each input here, I need to have only one output. Perhaps you have seen some equations which maybe we have got this. Okay? Is equal to zero. It's possible we can find two values of x. Perhaps we have seen maybe x is equal to plus or minus maybe 2. Meaning of what x is equal to 2, x is equal to negative 2. Okay? You can have two values of x mapping to one value of y. But it is not possible of you having two values of y mapping to one value of x. So once you see to say one value, uh, one value of x is mapping to two values of y, that is going to be wrong. That is not a function. Okay? For example, let's say we have a function. Let's have this. Let's have this. Let's see if this is going to be a function. Let's say we have um, 1, 2. Then let's have 1, 3. Let's have 2, 3. Let's see if this is a function. We are saying that for us to consider something to be a function, all the input values must have an output value. Meaning that all the element of x, they are supposed to have the output value. 
at the same time there should be only one output value for each input okay so we have got one we have um, we also have two then the output values we have two and three let's see so one is mapping into two at the same time one is also mapping into three then two is mapping to two is mapping to three now we are saying that we can have two values of x mapping to two different values of y okay we are saying that we can have two values of x mapping to one value of y that is just okay okay but it is not possible of having two values of y mapping to uh, one value of what of x okay so as we can see here we cannot call this one to be a function because one is having two output it's not possible that we have the input value it's not possible that the input value can have two output values so we are going to say that this is not a function okay so now from there let's also talk about um one-to-one uh, -one function so let's let's say we have got um, a function let's have this let's also have this let's say we have one two three four let's have three four five six so let's say one is mapping to three two is mapping to this is mapping there this is mapping there so we have got x and y now what you need to understand here is very simple and straightforward so this is going to be a function because each input value has got an output value at the same time each output value is only mapping to one um, values of y then we can say that this is one to one this is one to one function because only one element of y is going to one element of element of x is going to one element of y 1 is going to 3, 2 is going to 4, 3 is going to 5, 4 is going to 6. So this is one to one function. Let's have another one. Let's say we have a different one. Okay. Let's say we have uh, 0. Then we have 1. We have 2. Then let's have also uh, negative 2. Although I was supposed to start from here. This is going to be negative 2. 0. 1 then we're going to have we're going to have what we're going to have 2 just like this then let's have 0 here let's have 1 let's have 4 now let's say that this is mapping there then at the same time 0 is mapping to 0 1 is mapping to 1 this is mapping to so this perhaps this is a function okay let me let me redo it we say this is mapping to one but zero is mapping to zero okay it is possible that two values of x can give us one value of y that is just okay but it's not, it is not possible that one value or two values of y giving us one value of x it's not possible so here we can see that this is going to be a function but this function what type of uh, or the function is this this is main to one okay many to one why why are we saying many to one many values of x are going to one value of y as we can see negative two and zero they are going to zero only zero meaning that it is many to one so two values of x they are going to one value of y that is it is a function and what type of the function it is many to one okay then there's also what we call let's have this a different one we see what we're going to have let's say we have uh, one here let's have nine and let's have a zero okay then this side let's have also a different one so we're going to have um, one here here we're going to have three this is going to be negative three zero so let's say that um, one is going to one then nine is going to 3 at the same time 9 is going to negative 3 then 0 is going to 0 remember we said that we cannot have two values of x of y going to one value of x so this is not a function one is not a function two this function as we can see it is one to many 
it is not a function but it is one to many function okay why are we saying it is one to many we can see that one element of x is going to uh, two uh, two values of what two values of y so it is one to many but it's not a function because we have got one element of x which is mapping to two different er uh, element of y which is not possible okay it's possible we can have one two element of x going to one ele uh, one member of y that is just okay but not one member of x going to two members of what of y that is not going to be a function okay so now let's say we have a different one like this so we have one let's have two let's have three next let's have this so let's say that this is a this is b so we have four five and then six let's say that one is going to this is going there then this is going there at the same time three uh, three is going there at the same time three is also going there so as we can see one element of x is going to uh, two elements of y or one element of a is going to two elements of what b at the same time two elements of a they are going to one element of what b so this this is not a function it is not a function because one element okay uh, two element are going to uh, one element of a is giving us two different element of what y which is not possible okay so now we can say that this is many to many this is many to many but it's not a function okay now let's say you have this so let's say this is x and then this is y let's have a b c and then here we have capital a b c now let's say this is going here okay then this is going there it's also going there so we can see that this is not a function one is not a function because two element of y they're giving us one element of x one and at the same time all the elements of x they're supposed to to have an output so this is supposed to be mapped so if you have got any element which is not mapped to anything as long as that element is in x then that is not a function okay what if i change this then i put it like this okay I put it like this or we say this um, goes here then again this one goes there so this is going to be a function it is possible we can have all the element of X which we can we can see that the input has got an output value but still we have got one member which is not mapped as long as that member is in Y then that is just okay but we are supposed to have all the element in x they are supposed to be mapped so all the element of uh, the input values they are supposed to have what the output but it is possible that the output cannot have the what the input that is just okay so we can consider that one to be a function okay so now let's see how we can solve this we have got this question which is saying find the domain and range of each of the following function so let's start with the function uh, or the domain so the domain in this case we know that these are the x so we're going to start with getting from the ascending order we're going to have zero so we start from zero from zero we have three three we have now uh, five five we have got eight eight then we have got nine so this is our domain okay what is the range or the function f the range is one one then we have going to have four four we're going to have seven seven we're going to have eleven eleven we're going to have twelve that is our range okay so go ahead and find the domain and range for the function g you can pause the video and find the domain and range okay so there we go so the domain in this case is going to be we're going to start with um, uh, negative we're going to start with the the one which is the lowest which is ten we've got ten 20 30 40 and 50 that is our domain okay so what is our range in this case the range these are the values of y so you can see that we have got this this 
this here we have this we have also this so that is our range so we can list the range here we can see that our range is going to be um negative four comma six or oh, is comma one we have got one comma one comma six comma nine uh, then we have got comma 13. So this is our range. Okay, so that is it for question one. Now the next question is saying which of the following set uh, of ordered pairs represent a function? So let's see, we have got the first one. So the first one we can see that we're going to have. So allow me to put x and y. So I'm going to do this. Okay, that is what we're going to have also have this this so what is our x our x we have got one that is the domain i'm getting the the first part here so i'm ha i'm having this one this one the this one okay so i'm having one three okay i'm having one three and what and seven the uh, y values we have got a four and so we start with three we have got a three and a four so let's see. One is mapped into what? Four. So one goes to four. One going to four. We put even arrows. Then three is going to four. Three is going to four. Okay. Seven is going to three. Seven is going to three. So is this a function? Yes, it is a function. One, because the all the input values have got what? The output values. Next, we can see that only one input value is having what only we need to have only one out, uh, input value for every input value we need to have the output values okay that is the first point then the next point we can see that it is okay we can have uh, two different element of x they can go to one uh, to the same element of y but it is not possible as having Two different element of y going to one element of x okay so this is a function okay so let's let's go to part b we go to part b we see if that is a function so we're going to have also x y we have this we have this what values do we have we have got one we have got two that's all then we have got three and then we have got what? Oh, we have got 2 and 3 here. 2 and 3. So we can see that eh, 1 is mapped into 2. Then 1 is mapped again into 3. 2 is mapped into 3. So two diff one value of x is going to two different values of y, which is not correct. So this is not a function. So only one value of x is supposed to be going to one value of what of y or two element of x can go to one element of what y that is just okay and not one element of x mapping to two different element of y meaning that is not a function okay so let's see we have a uh, question three here which is saying let's set a to be equal to so we're going to be using that we have been given a and b to be equal to okay we have got um, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Then the B is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Now, the first point here they are saying, which of the following set of ordered pairs represent a function from A to B? So the first point, which is part A, part A is a 1 comma 0. So 1 comma 0 is going to be, we start from 1 all the way to comma 0. So where is 1? We have got 0 comma 1. So 0 here all the way to 1. Next is 1 and negative 2. So 1 here all the way to negative 2. Next is 2 comma 0, 2 comma 0. Okay, let me redo that one. 2 comma 0 is here. Next is uh, 3 comma 2. 3 all the way to 2. So is this a function? We can only consider to say it's a function 
as long as all the values of x, all the values of a, they appear to, they have got an output value. Okay, so as we can see, even if this one is not mapped to anything, but as long as all the values of x, they are they have got the output values, then that one is going to be a function. Then one value of x cannot go to two different values of what? Two different values of y. So as we can see here, all the values here, each value has got just one output here. So we are going to consider this one to be a function. So part one, this is we are going to call it to say this is a function. Okay. So let's go to part B. I'm going to use the same one. Part B is saying we have zero comma negative one, zero comma negative one, then two comma two, two comma two. Next we have one comma negative one comma negative uh, two, one comma negative two. That one. Uh, we have three comma zero, three comma zero, three here comma zero. Next we have one comma one, so one here comma one. So this element, which is for a, this element is giving us two different values of y, meaning that this is not a function. So this is not a function because one element of a is giving us two values so one input is giving us one uh, two output which is not possible so we said that uh, there should be only one output for each input as simple as that so this is not a function let's go to the next one we go to part c is part c a function let's see we have got 0 comma 0 0 comma 0 is this point here then you have got 1 comma 0 1 comma zero it's going there then two comma zero two going there to zero that is just okay then three comma zero again this one going there that is just okay so can if, is this a function so this is a function yes because all the output values or all the input values they have got what output value so we said that there should be only one output uh, for each input so we we, we can see here that this input here has got the output this one has got output this one has got output so this is what this is we're going to call this one as a function okay perhaps you have seen equation which is starting x to the power 4 you can have four different values of x giving us one value of y so this is a function let's go to part d so part d is 0 comma 0 comma 2 0 comma 2 which is there or oh, is 0 comma 2 not negative 0 all the way to 2 1 comma what we have oh, we have uh, next is 3 comma 0 3 comma 0 so my 3 is here comma 0 next i have uh, 1 comma 1 comma 1 1 comma 1 that is just okay but all the output outputs or all the input values they're supposed to have the output value so as we can see this Im input here has got nothing we don't it's not mapped to anything so this is not a function okay so this is what we need to know under um, relations and functions so let's talk about um one-to-one uh, -one function so how do you know that uh, a function is one to one or is main to one okay so a function is said to be one to one if f of a is equal to f of b okay so if f of a is equal to f of b then we're going to conclude to say this function is one to one so for example let's have um one question here let's say we have a function which is um f of x is equal to uh, x squared minus 1 so let's see is this function 1 to 1 let's prove okay so a function is said to be 1 to 1 if f of a is equal to f of b so what it means here is that in, in this function where there is x I'm going to put a so I'm going to say it's going to be a squared minus 1 has to be equal to 
b squared minus 1. So I can shift 1 to the other side, it's going to be uh, plus, which is going to be a squared, has to be equal to b squared minus 1 plus 1. So these two can cancel out, it's going to be 0. So I'm going to have a squared is equal to b squared. So we are trying to make a as a subject of formula, what are we going to do? It's going to be, we are going to square both sides. Now, the moment when I square this side, meaning that I'm going to have uh, this side, this side is going to be plus or minus, so it's going to be a is equal to plus or minus b. So this, this mean, uh, what it means is that a is equal to b and a is equal to negative b, which is not true. So we are saying that a function can only be said to be 1 to 1 if a is equal to b, okay? And not a is equal to negative b. So as we can see here, we've got two values. We've got a is equal to b and a is equal to negative b, meaning that this function is not 1 to 1, okay? So this function is not 1 to 1 because a is not equal to b. So you say, after after reaching at this stage, you know that a is equal to uh, plus or minus b, then you're going to say that the, this function is not 1 to 1 since f of a is not equal to f of b. As simple as that. Okay, so let's have another example. Let's say we have a function which is um, f of x is equal to x plus 5. Let's prove Let's see if this function is 1 to 1. So a function is said to be 1 to 1 if f of a is equal to f of b. Okay? So what it means that in the first part where there is x, I'm going to put a. So it's going to be a plus 5 has to be equal to b plus 5. I can shift 5 to the other side. It's going to be a is equal to b plus 5 minus 5. So these two guys are going to give us 0. So we're going to have a is equal to b. So as we can see, a is equal to b, meaning that this function is 1 to 1. Okay. So this is how you prove that the function is 1 to 1. Okay, so let's have uh, one more example. Let's say we have um, f of x to be equal to the square root of x. Let's prove that. Let's see if this function is 1 to 1. So a function is said to be 1 to 1 if f of a is equal to f of b. So let's see. So we're going to say um, the square root of a has to be equal to the square root of b. Okay. So I can square both sides to remove the square root. So if I do this, I do this, I'm going to find that a will be equal to b. So this function is 1 to 1. Okay. So another example which we're going to have is... Um, uh, very simple. Let's say we have um, f of x is equal to uh, 2x minus 3. Let's see if this function is 1 to 1. So a function is said to be 1 to 1 if f of a is equal to f of b. So as we can see, this is going to be 2a has to, uh, 2a minus 3 has to be equal to 2b minus 3. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to shift this to the right hand side. Then I'm going to have 2a is going to be equal to 2b minus 3 plus 3. So these two are going to give me 0. Okay. Therefore, I'm going to have 2a is equal to 2b. So I can divide both sides by 2. I can see that a is going to be equal to b. So therefore, this function is 1 to 1 since a is equal to b. Okay. Um... Let's have one more example. Let's say we have f of x is equal to x squared. So I believe this is going to be the same as the first example, where we're going to say uh, a squared is equal to b squared. We get the square root both sides, we're going to have a is equal to plus or minus b. So since f of a is not equal to f of b, this function is not one to one. Okay, sometimes you might think of um, uh, the relations. So let's say we have x and then we have y. So let's have this now. We see how can you represent a uh, one-to-one -one function using mapping. So let's say this is um, a, this is b, this is c. Okay, 
then this is um, maybe capital A, capital B, capital C. So if this one goes there, this one goes here, okay, once again, this one goes there, then this one goes here. So as you can see, every element of x is only mapping to one element of y, meaning that this function is one to one. Okay, as simple as that. So, using mapping, this is how you can tell to say this function is one to one if every element of x is just mapping to one element of y, meaning that is one to one. Okay, so there is also what we call many to one. So, there is also what we call many to one. So, many to one is whereby you have got a function. Let's say this is our mapping. Okay, want to see the relationship which is going to be there. So, let's say this is. A, okay, this is A, this is B, this is C, and then let's have, um, let's have Z here, so if this one is mapping here, this is what's going to happen, so this is what we call many to one, so what is happening here is that many, many, uh, many values of X, they are only leading to one value of Y, so that's why we're calling it as many to one, so this is many to one function, Okay, now sometimes you c it's possible you can use the graph to tell to say this function is one to one. Okay, so if I have my graph here, okay, then I have got a curve which is like this. Let's say maybe it's coming from here. Okay, so if you draw a line, if this line cuts only one side of the um, it's only cut one side of the graph, meaning this function is one to one. So, for example, here it's just cutting here, meaning this function is going to be one to one. So, for example, maybe if you have been given something like this, let's say um, you have got your graph and then you have got an equation which is like this. Okay, so if I cut my graph here straight, I'm going to draw a straight line, maybe from here all the way to this side. As you can see, it is touching three sides. Okay? Meaning that this is many to one function. So this is not one to one function. A one to one function is only supposed to touch one side of the graph. So, if maybe you also have uh, something like this. This. This is also not many to one because sometimes you can have, this is uh, f of x is equal to maybe x squared. Okay? We even proved that this is not one to one. So as you can see, it's going to touch two sides. It's going to touch here and here. So this is not a one to one function. So this is how you you know that a function is one to one or is not one to one. Then main to one is when you have got more values of x, then they are mapping to one value of y. That is main to one function. Okay. Okay, so if you've been given a function, then they ask you to say find f of 4, find f of negative 4, find f of, uh, f of 2. What it means there is that where there is x, this is the first qu equation, where there is x we need to put 4, then we need to find the value. Okay, meaning that what it means there is that f of 4 is going to be equal to, in this function, where there is x, I need to replace it with what? 4. Okay, so as we can see there, it is it's going to be four, but x is square, so it's going to be four squared. Okay, minus six. Okay, then this is going to give us f of four is going to be four squared is sixteen. Sixteen minus six is going to give us a ten, meaning this is the answer. Okay, so we go to part team two which is saying f of negative 4. So f of negative 4 is going to be negative 4 squared minus 6. So negative 4 squared is going to give us 16. Then 16 minus 6 is going to be 10. So part 1 and part 2, the answer is going to be the same. Okay, let's go to part 3. Part 3 is saying, if we have been given um this function then they ask us to find f of 2 
how can we find this? So this is going to be 2 squared minus 6. So 2 squared is going to be a 4, minus 6 is going to give us negative 2. So the answer for part 3 is negative 2. Okay, sometimes they can ask us to say, this function which have been given, okay, we have been given the function to say f of x to be equal to uh, x squared minus 6. Then they ask us to say, given that um, f of a is equal to a, find the possible values of a. So what it means there is that in the first part, where there is a, where there is x in the first equation, we have to replace it with a. Okay, then you have to equate it to what? To a. Then you need to find the values of a. So what it means there is that we are going to have uh, f of a is going to be equal to a squared minus 6. Now they want us to put where there is this with a. Then this is going to be a is going to be equal to a squared minus 6. So they want us to find the possible values of a. So we have our equation now which is um, a has to be equal to a squared minus 6. What, do, what should we do? I can just shift uh, 6 to go to the left hand side, then a to go to the right hand side. So it's going to be 6, it's going to be equal to a squared minus a. Okay, I can factor out in a now, which is the same as, I can just write this, it's the same as a squared minus a has to be equal to 6. I can now factor out a. So a will be open brackets, then you are going to have a minus 1 is equal to 7 okay now from here we can see we can see that a is going to be equal to 6 and a minus 1 will be equal to 6 therefore a will be equal to 6 plus 1 meaning that another value of a is going to be 7 so the possible values of a in this case is going to be a is equal to 6 and a is equal to 7 as simple as that okay let's have another function okay let's have different one let's say we have been given f of t to be equal to the square root of 25 minus t squared. Now, they ask us to find, they ask us to find f of 3, then they ask us to find again f of, um, f of uh, x plus 5, again they ask us to find f of 2x. What can we do? So, without wasting our, our time, what we're going to do here is um, what it means here the first part the first question where there is t we are going to replace it with 3 then we need to find the value okay so there we go it's going to be f of 3 is going to be is going to be equal to f of 3 is going to be equal to the square root of 25 minus where there is t let's put 3 minus 3 squared so f of 3 is going to be 25 minus 9. Okay. So my f of 3 is going to be 25 minus 9 is going to be a 16. Okay. 25 minus 9 is going to give us a 16. Now the square root of 16, we're going to have a 16. And the square root of 16 is 4. So the answer for part 1 is, is going to give us a 4. Okay, let's go to part 2 where they want us to find f of um, x plus 5. So what will be f of um, x plus 5? This is going to be equal to, where there is t, we are going to put x plus 5. Okay, so it's going to be the square root of 25 minus, open brackets, x plus e. 5 but t is squared so i have to square this so my f of x plus 5 is going to be equal to uh, this is the same as 25 then it's the same as i can say x plus 5 x plus 5 and i can i can expand this it's going to give me what it's going to give me x times x is going to give me x squared x times 5 is going to give me 5x then again 5 times x is going to give me 5x 5 times 5 is going to give me 25 
meaning that this is the part which I'm going to put it there but this is the same as x squared plus 10x plus 25 okay because 5 plus 5 is going to give me 10 so I'm going to have minus now this negative is going to affect everything inside there so we're going to have x squared plus 10x then plus 25 now we can get rid of this so now from here we can see that our x plus 5 is going to be the square root over we are going to have 25 this is um 25 minus i'm distributing now negative is going to be minus x squared minus 10x minus a 25 okay now at 25 and 25 is going to be 25 minus 25 so they are going to cancel out it's going to be zero okay then we are going to have f of x plus 5 is going to be we're going to have negative x squared minus 10x okay so this is the final answer for part two okay now we can also find part three you can pause the video and find the answer then you continue with it so now there we go we have f of 2x this is uh, is going to be where they still need to put 2x so we're going to have a 25 minus so this is going to be 2x but it has to be squared okay so my f of 2x will be equal to i'm going to have a 25 minus this is going to be 4x squared okay and there is nothing that i can do with this equation now with this function so i'm going to end there so i'll say this is my final answer okay so that's what you need to know now let's talk about um the inverse of the function so how do we find the inverse of the function so let's say we have been given uh, a function f of x to be equal to uh, 2 then divided by x minus 2 okay and then let's also have a g of x to be equal to uh, let's just put it as 1 divided by x plus 1 now what if they ask us to find f of inverse so inverse sometimes they can ask you to say find 1 over f of x so 1 over f of x it is the same as f of inverse okay it is the same okay so sometimes they can use 1 over f of x that is the same as the inverse so now in this case we want to find f of inverse <clears throat> now how do we do it to find the inverse of the function what you have to do is you replace this part with y and then make x as a subject of formula okay now after making x as a subject of formula where there is y replace it with x then that is the inverse of that function so for example in this case we have f of x is equal to 2 over x minus 2 so where there is f of x i'm going to replace it with what with uh, y so i'm going to say that y will be equal to 2 divided by x minus 2 my goal here is to make x as a subject of formula so i'm going to say i'll cross multiply here there is one so i'm going to say this is going to be xy minus 2x this is going to be equal to 2 so my goal is to make x as a subject of formula so i'm going to say that i'm going to shift 2y to the other side xy has to be equal to 2 plus 2y okay from here what i'm going to do i'm going to divide both sides by y both sides by y therefore my x will be equal to 2 plus 2y divided by y now what i'm going to do now from here is in this part here where there is y i'm going to replace it with what with x so i'm going to say my f of inverse of x is going to be equal to 2 plus 2x where there is y i'm replacing you back with what x everything divided by what x okay now if you want you can factor out 2 
on top there but it's okay you can just leave it here meaning that this is the function of f of x now let's find the the inverse now we are saying that our f of this is our f of inverse which is a 2 plus 2x over x let's find the inverse of the function of g so what would be the inverse in this case remember we are replacing this with we are trying to find this so what i'm going to do i'm going to replace this with y and the make x as a subject or formula i'm going to say that y will be equal to 1 divided by x plus 1 my goal is to make x as a subject of formula i'm going to cross multiply so i'm going to have xy plus y is going to be equal to 1 okay i'm going to shift y to the right hand side it's going to be x y will be equal to 1 minus y next i'm going to divide both sides by y both sides by y my x will be equal to 1 minus y divided by y meaning that my f of my g of inverse is going to be equal to now where there is x in this part here where there is y i'm going to replace it with what with x so it's going to be one minus x divided by x so this is my inverse of g okay now from there they can also ask us to find from there they can also ask us to find um they can ask us to find f of g then they say inverse so what it means there is that they want us to find f of g first then we need to find the inverse of that f of g okay so this is what we're going to do first i have to find f of g okay so what would be my f of g what it means here is that we did this this is a composite function so what it means here is that in the function of f where there is x i'm going to put g okay so for example here is going to be um my f is 2 over x minus 2 but where there is x i have 2 over x where there is x i'm going to put 1 divided by what x plus 1 then i have minus 2 now what i'm going to do here i'm going i'll need first to uh to finish up with this part the down part here so what will be the down part this down part here it is going to be 1 over x plus 1 then we have 2 then this is the same as we have 1 here so i'm going to say my common denominator is going to be x plus 1 so x plus 1 there we're going to have 1 here minus this one we're going to have a 2x minus 2 so on top there is going to be 2 and 1 is going to give us negative 1. So we are going to have uh, negative 2x minus 1 over x plus 1. This is what we are going to have here. Meaning we have this now. We have 2 divided by negative 2x minus 1 over x plus 1. So this we have 2 on top divided by we have a negative 2 minus 1. Negative 2x minus 1. Then everything divided by x plus 1. Now this again is the same as 2 times. I'm going to get the reciprocal of this. It's going to be x plus 1. Everything divided by negative 2x minus 1. Okay. So now I'm going to say 2 times x and 2 times 1. Which is going to be 2x plus 2. Everything divided by negative 2x minus 1. Meaning that the whole of this is now going to be replaced by 2x plus 1. Divided by negative 2x minus 1 okay so i'll continue from here okay i'll continue from here i'm going to say that the whole part there is going to be replaced by we are going to have a 2x plus 2 everything divided by negative 2x minus 1 now this this is a f of g now they want us to get the inverse of this but what i have to do here i can factor out negative down there if i want but if if i want to leave it like this i can leave it so this is f of g okay so this is our f of f of g 
of x. Now they want us to find the inverse of this. So we are going to replace this part with y, then we make x as a subject of formula. So it's going to be y is going to be equal to 2x plus 2 divided by negative 2x minus 1. Okay. Now from here, I'm going to make x as a subject of formula. I'm going to cross multiply and I'm going to have negative 2xy minus y because 1 times y is going to give me y. So it's going to be is equal to 2x plus 2. I'll shift 2x to the left hand side. At the same time, I'm going to shift the y negative y to go to the other side. So what are we going to have? So this is what we're going to have. We are going to have a uh, negative 2xy minus 2x has to be equal to has to be equal to we, we have 2 minus this is it was minus so this is going to be plus y my goal is to make x as a subject of formula that is going to be my inverse now so i'm going to say i need to factor out x so i'm going to have x open brackets i'm going to remain with negative negative 2y minus 2 has to be equal to 2 minus y i'll divide both sides by negative 2y minus 2 even here by negative 2y minus 2 so these they'll cancel i'll have my x to be equal to 2x or is 2 minus 2 plus y divided by negative 2 y minus 2. Now from here this is my inverse. Where there is y we are going to replace it with x as we know. So this is going to be now equal to where there is the y I'm going to replace it with what? So it's going to be plus x everything divided by negative 2x minus 2. But if I want here I can I can factor out negative. That is going to be very much simple for us. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to say um, 2 plus x, everything divided, negative is going to be like this, plus 2. So now I can divide both sides by negative. It's going to be negative 2, which is the same as I can start with x, it's going to be negative x minus 2, everything divided by 2, x plus 2. So this is going to be my final answer. Okay, so let's talk about a uh, composite function. So um, under composite function, uh, you're going to be given um, more than one function. For example, let's say we have our function f of x to be equal to uh, 2x squared plus 2. And then we also have g of x is equal to x minus 1 then they also give us to say h of x which is going to be equal to 3x okay now sometime they can ask us to say find f of g of x what does it mean okay so when you say f of g of x what it means is that in the function of x where there is x in the function of f, where there is x, we are going to put the whole function of g. So it is f of g. Okay. So in the function of f, where there is x, we are going to put the whole function of, uh, of g. Okay. So in this case, the function of um, f is uh, 2x, is this one. Okay. Now in this function, where there is x, we are going to put what? We are going to put g, which is this one. Okay? So we are going to say f of g of x is going to be equal to, is going to be 2, then open brackets. Where there is x, we need to put x minus 1. So x minus 1 is a function of g. Okay? Then since this x is squared, I have to square this plus 2. Now I need to find the value here. Although it's not going to be a value, but I need just to simplify it. Okay. So I'm going to have x. This is the same as x minus 1. At the same time, x minus 1. So x times x is going to be x squared. x times 1 is going to be negative x. 
then we're going to have negative 1 times x is going to have to be negative x then we're going to have 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 is going to be positive 1 so this is going to be x squared minus 2x plus 1 okay so we're going to have a 2 open brackets we're going to have x squared minus 2x plus 1 okay this e we have plus e 2 here now we can simplify this is going to be 2 times e, uh, x squared is going to be 2x squared minus this is going to give us now a 4x plus a 2 and then plus 2 so our final answer is going to be 2x squared minus a 4x plus 4 so this is the final answer of f of g of x okay now that is part one now let's say maybe they ask us to say find um g of h then they put us x here so what it means there is that in the function of g where there is x we need to put the function we need to put what h okay so what it means is that the function of g is just x minus 1 so where there is x we are going to put 3x because 3x is the function of h so it's going to be 3x minus 1 so there is i can't simplify this so it's going to end there okay now what if i've been given um h of h of f okay i need to find this what it means is that in the function of h where there is x we're going to put in f okay so we are going to have three where there is x now we are going to put f f is a 2x squared plus 2 okay we can simplify this or we can just expand in short it's going to be 6 6x squared plus c uh, 6 so we can end here if you want you can leave it there or you can expand leave it there okay now let's have different thing let's have another question okay let's say we have um, just two functions let's say we have um, f of x to be equal to 2 divided by x then you have g of x to be equal to x minus 3 now let's say uh, we want to find f of g of x now like i said where there is z in the function of f where there is x we are going to put g meaning it's going to be 2 divided by where there is x we are going to put x minus 3 meaning i can end there so that is going to be my answer now what if they ask us to find uh g of f that is going to be the opposite now so what it means there is that in the function of g where there is x we put f so x we are going to replace it with that 2 over x so it's going to be 2 over x minus 3 as simple as that so if you want you can end there or you can say that is going to be the same as you have 2 over x minus 3 it's going to be the same as if you say x then x there we are going to have 2 minus um, 3x so you can also end here which is just the same as ending there okay now let's have a different thing let's say we have um again two functions we're going to use f and g again so let's say we have our f to be let's say f of x is um 2x plus 3 then our g of x is um 2 minus x squared okay now if they ask us to find um f of um, g then of 0 what it means that if we find f of g where there is x we're going to replace it with zero and then we find the the value so what we're going to do here is um, first we have to find f of g 
okay so if i'm to find f of g what would be my f of g my f of g of x be, before I, I plug in zero is going to be in the function of f where there is x i need to put g so in this case we are going to have this is x so it's going to be 2 where there is x i'm going to put 2 minus x squared plus 3 so this is going to be f4 minus 2x squared plus 3 i can simplify this and say this is going to be 4 plus 3 is going to be a 7 minus 2x squared now they are saying that where there is x now we are going to replace it with 0 okay meaning that we are going to continue from here we are going to say 7 minus 2 where there is x we put 0 0 then we square it so this is going to give us 2 times 0 squared is 0 0 times 2 is going to be 0 7 minus 0 we are going to get what a 7 so our final answer in this case is going to be what a 7 as simple as that okay now what if they ask us to find uh, g of f then we say 0 okay they ask us to find g of f then we find 0 so this is going to be we find first g of f so where in the function of g where there is x we are going to put f g is 2 minus x squared now where there is x i have to replace with what 2x plus 3 that is f now so it's going to be 2 okay minus i'm going now to put this in brackets 2x plus 3 then i have to square it so this is going to be 2 minus this is the same as 2 times 2 is going to is 2x times 2x is going to be 4x squared then 2x times 3 is going to be plus 6x again 3 times 2x is going to be plus uh, 6x again then 3 times 3 is going to give us what it's going to give us a 9 okay so this is going to be 2 minus this is going to be a 4x squared um, plus a 12x plus 9. I can now distribute the negative. So it's going to be 2 minus 4x squared minus 12x minus 9. So 2 and 9 can go. So it's going to be 2 minus 9 is going to be negative 7. So I'm going to have negative 7 minus 4x squared minus um 12x now they are saying that where there's x we put 0 so this is going to be negative 7 minus 4 0 squared minus then we're going to have 12 again 0 so this part is going to give us 0 this part is going to give us 0 so our final answer will end up having negative 7 so that is going to be our answer okay now we can we can have a different one where we say the same one let's let's try to find um f of f then we need to find four so what it means that in f of f in the function of f where there's x we put f again so our f in this case is a uh, 2x now where there is x is 2x plus 3 so where there is x we are going to put the same function again so it's going to be 2 open brackets then 2x plus 3 then again plus what 3 okay so it's going to be 2 so we can say 2 times 2 is going to give us what it's going to give us a 4x plus this is going to be a 6 then plus 3 okay so now uh, we can see that from here is going to be a 4x plus 9 where there is x we put 4 so it's going to be 4 times 4 plus 9 4 times 4 is 9 4 times 4 is 16 then 16 plus 9 is going to give us a 25 so 25 is the answer in this case so let's talk about how to find the domain and the range of the function so uh, whenever we're talking about the range and the domain so let's start with the domain whenever we're talking about the domain these are the values of x okay 
and whenever we're talking about the length these are the values of y so let's say we have the function f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 now whenever they ask you to say find the domain of the function the values of x which when we plug in here the function is going to be defined so in this function I can plug in any value of x this function still is going to be defined any value meaning that the domain is all real numbers okay but now let's say you have a function uh, let's say you have a function which is f of x and then you have maybe 1 divided by x plus 1 then they ask you to find the domain now here you can't say it is all real numbers because we have the fraction so on the denominator here once we plug in 1 or let's say once we plug in negative 1 this is going to be 1 over negative 1 plus 1 which is going to be 1 over 0 this is going to be undefined but we are trying to make the function to be defined okay so in this case the domain is not going to be all real numbers now whenever you have been given a fraction what you have to do get the, dom the denominator set it not equal to 0 so you say x plus 1 not equal to 0 why are we saying not equal to 0 because we can never have a 0 on the denominator once we have 0 on the denominator the function is going to be undefined that is very very important you have to know it the moment I put 0 the moment I have 1 over 0 or maybe I have 2 over 0 this is undefined and we are trying to make the function to be defined that is the reason why we have to set the whole denominator not equal to 0 okay then solve for x the value of x which you are going to find that is going to be your denom uh, the domain so in this case it's going to be x not equal to 0 minus 1 x not equal to negative 1 so in this case the domain is going to be x is such that x is not supposed to be equal to negative 1 but x can be any real number so any real number i can plug in any value of x any value as long as that value is not negative one this this function is going to be defined okay now you can represent domain either in set interval notation or in set builder notation so this is the set builder notation which you have if you want to represent it into um, set interval notation you can say that the domain is going to be from negative infinity from negative infinity I'm trying to write negative infinity here okay all the way to negative one but negative one is not included union from negative one also not included all the way to positive infinity so this is going to be my domain but negative one is not included that's the reason why I'm using open okay the moment I use close meaning it is included so it's not included now how do we find the range the range these are the values of y now to find the range what you have to do is what you have to do is you need to find the inverse of this function once you find the inverse of this function the same method which we are using on how to find the domain that is going to be the same method which you are going to use to find the range so range these are the values of y so when you're finding the inverse of the function we put this we present it with what y then make x as a subject of formula so it's going to be we cross multiply it's going to be y x or let's say x y it's going to be xy plus y is equal to 1 my goal is to make x as a subject of formula this is going to be xy it's going to be equal to 1 um, minus y I'll divide both sides by y both sides by y x will be equal to 1 minus y over y now the values of uh, whenever we're talking about the range those are the values of what 
the the values of y so we know that the inverse is going to be the inverse of this function where there is x we are going to put is going to be 1 minus x where there is y we present it with what x then we have this this is the inverse of the function now the same method which we use to find the domain that is the same method which we are going to use to find the range so I'm going to get this the denominator I set it not equal to 0 so that will be my range so range is going to be y is such that y should not be equal to 0 y can be anything but should not be equal to 0 at the same time y can be the member of all real numbers so that is my range so to find the range just find the inverse that would be the range what next let's say we have another question which is um, f of x f of x is equal to s of x plus 4 over 2x plus let me put minus minus 1 let's find the range and the domain you can pause the video and work on it okay so to find the domain we need just to get the denominator set it not equal to 0 and find the value of x 2x is going to be not equal to 0 then you are going to have 0 plus 1 so we're going to have 2x 1 so we divide both sides by 2 both sides by 2x not equal to 1 over 2 that is our domain so the domain will be equal to x is such that x should not be equal to 1 over 2 but x should be the member of all real numbers so this is the domain you can put this in set interval notation where you can say the domain will be from negative infinity to half half not included union half not included comma positive infinity so that is the domain okay what else let's now see how we can find the range we need to find the inverse of the function the same method which we used on how to find the domain that will be the same method which we are going to use to find the range so y will be equal to x plus 4 to x minus 1 so we cross multiply we are going to get um, 2xy minus y is going to be equal to x minus plus 4 our goal is to find the x to make x as a subject of formula we can shift this x to the other side and the one to the other side so we're going to have 2xy minus x is equal to 4 plus 1 which is going to be 5 that side so you have 2xy minus x is equal to 5 we can make x as a subject of formula this is going to give us 2y minus 1 is equal to 5 we divide both sides by 2y minus 1 both sides by 2y minus 1 x will be equal to 5 over 2y minus 1 so that is the inverse of the function so this inverse here if they ask you to find the inverse you just say the inverse is going to be negative 1 f of x is going to be 5 divided by 2 where there is y you put x so this is the inverse now you get this because we are trying to find the values of y so you get this set it no, not equal to 0 so it's going to be 2y minus 1 not equal to 0 so for y okay I believe this is going to give us the same as the domain so it's going to be 2y uh, is going to be not equal to 1 so I divide it by 2 we're going to get this we have uh, 2y not equal to 1 we divide it by 2 we divide it by 2 y not equal to half so the range in this case is going to be 
y a range is represented by y because we're talking about the values of y y is such that y should not be equal to half but y should be the member of all real numbers you can also put this in set interval notation where you say it's going to be negative infinity all the way to half then union half all the way to negative infinity ne positive infinity so that is the range okay so let's have another example where we have something which is complicated just a bit what are we going to have let's say we have um, f of x as um, 3x let's say 3x plus 2 over x squared minus 4 get the denominator set them not equal to 0 x squared minus 4 not equal to 0 x squared not equal to 4 so I get the square root both sides I get the square root meaning here I'm going to have plus or minus so I have x not equal to plus or minus 2 meaning that my domain is going to be x is such that x should not be equal to plus or minus 2 but this x has to be the member of all real numbers so I can also put this in set interval notation where I can say um, where I can say I need to have the values the domain is going to be from negative infinity all the way to negative 2 not included union then 2 all the way to infinity but 2 and negative 2 they are not included okay now how do we get to find the range find the inverse of the function the same method which we use on how to find the range that will be the same method which we're going to use now you can even test here we are saying that x should not be equal to plus or minus 2 and for sure if I plug in 2 here it's going to give me 4 which is going to be 4 minus 4 is 0 on the denominator there I'm going to have 0 which is going to be undefined probably we want our function to be defined so what are we supposed to do 2 is not supposed to be included negative 2 is not supposed to be included because once I plug in negative 2 there I'm going to get a 4 4 minus 4 is 0 so it's not supposed to be included so that is making sense let's find the inverse now so to find the inverse we we'll say y will be equal to 3x plus 2 3x minus 4 this is going to give us 3x squared y minus 4 is equal to 3x plus 2 so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to shift x 3x to the left hand side and negative 4 to the right hand side so I'm going to have minus 3x is going to be equal to 2 uh, plus 4 so we're going to have 3x squared y what else are we going to have we're going to have Uh, we're going to have what we're going to have a six here okay oh I, I forgot in minus three then you have two this is going to give us six so this is X we are trying to make X as a subject of formula what do we do we fact out X okay so if I fact out x squared although this is not going to make sense what I'm supposed to do here is okay so this is going to be um, we're going to have what we're going to have 3 y minus so here I'm going to remain with again 3 over x 
which is not making sense at the same time. Okay. So if it's not making sense, the meaning that this function has got no inverse. It has no inverse. So it has got no inverse. Okay. So you leave it there. Let's say we have another question, which is um. So if the function has got no inverse, it has got no range. Because you can't find the range there. So it has got no it has got no uh, the values of what the values of y. So it is not restricted actually. So we have the next question, which is uh, let's say we are, we have now the radical f of x is equal to um, this. Okay, how do we find the domain? We know that um, we can never have a negative. Let's say we have a negative. We can never have a negative inside the square root that is going to be undefined okay meaning that what we have to do is we need just to get what is inside set them greater than or equal to zero we can we can have zero we can have zero we have the square root of zero which is zero zero going up or let me say zero and above that's making sense the function is going to be defined but we can never have a negative so in this case the domain is um x is such that x has to be greater than or equal to 0 at the same time x has to be the member of all real numbers using the set interval notation you can say that the domain will be uh, is starting from 0 but 0 is included so I'm supposed to use the closed one starting from 0 all the way to positive infinity but we don't know if positive infinity is included so we'll put the open one so this is the domain. Now to find the range, you need to find the inverse of this function. Finding the inverse, you know what to do. We are supposed to put y is equal to the root of x. What else? We square both sides to remove the square root because we are trying to make x as a subject of formula. We are going to have y squared is equal to x. Okay. So what are we going to have? From here, we can see that it's the same as we have a function which is x. Um, we have x is equal to y to the power 2. So we have nothing which is involved in um, uh, this part here. I can plug in any number, the function is going to be defined. Okay? Yeah, the function is going to be defined. So, what values of y, if I plug in there, the function is going to be defined? Okay? So, this is going to give me all real numbers. This is going to give me all real numbers. We are going to talk about graphing of radical functions. So we'll also talk about how to find the domain and the range of radical functions. Okay, so let's start. Let's say we have a function which is um, f of x is equal to the square root of x. Now, last time we mentioned to say whenever you are trying to come up with a domain, you have to set what is inside greater than, equal, uh, greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so I have to say x is greater than or equal to 0, meaning that that is my domain. But you can also uh, find the domain and the range, especially the range when it comes for the range for the radical function. It's very easy for you to, not, to know the range when you sketch the graph. Okay, so here we are saying that x has to be greater than or equal to 0, meaning that uh, the values of x which you, are going, which you are supposed to use, they're supposed to be greater than or equal to 0. That's when this function can be defined. So we have x, y. So I'm going to say that, well, I'm going to start from 0. 0 is included. So if I put 0 where there is x, the value of y is going to be 0. Next, if I put 1, the value of y is going to be 1 because the square root of 1 is 1. So what if I put 4? 4, the value of y is going to be 2 because the square root of 4 is 2. Next, I can say 9. 9, the square root of 9 is 3. I can end there. If you want, you can have 3 coordinates. That's just okay. 
so next what we're going to do is um, we're going to have our graph okay here is going to be our graph y this is our x so we're going to have one two three four five six seven let me put another one here and another one so meaning we have one two three four five six seven eight nine okay so we have um in the y-axis we can have one two three four that is just okay so next we can plot we have zero comma zero starting from this point then one comma one is this point we have uh, four comma two so this is a uh, two so three four four is this one comma two is somewhere here okay what next we have nine comma three three is here nine is somewhere here so it's supposed to be somewhere uh, here so our graph will start from here it goes there start from there it goes there so that is the graph of the square root of x now from here you can find the domain domain these are the values of x so what the uh, what values of x do we have as we can see from the graph here we have got zero it's starting from zero going to positive infinity meaning that our domain is uh, zero is included all the way to positive infinity that is the domain now the range range these are the values of y zero is included so it's also starting from zero all the way to positive infinity that is our game so that is the parent graph which we have for the radical functions let's have a different thing now let's say we have um, f of x to be equal to uh, the square root of uh, 2 minus x so what you have to do for you to know which so let's talk about a piecewise function so what is a piecewise function so a piecewise function this is a function which has got more than uh, one equation perhaps you have seen an equation which is like this or a function which is like this okay so you're going to have um maybe more than one function let's say we have got x plus 2 then the domain is um, x is less than or equal to negative 1 so each function represent uh, has got its own domain okay so we have 1 then you have got comma negative 1 is less than x x is uh, less than 1 then we also have x squared then we have comma x is greater than or equal to 1 okay now here they are going to ask you to sketch this and maybe find the value sometimes let's say they ask us to say find um, f over f of negative 1 also find f of uh, 0 again find f of 3 so how do we find that so before we go any further let's first sketch uh, the function okay so sketching a piecewise y function it is very very simple what you have to understand is that you only follow the domain which have been given so you only follow these these are the uh, the domain okay so the first part here this is the domain for the first function this is the domain for the second function this is the domain for the third function okay so now what is happening here is that um, what we're going to do we're going to say this is our our graph so I'll put it here this is going to be my graph okay so here's my graph now this graph what I'm going to do is uh, I'll start with the coordinate which I've been given so as we can see from the domain which we have been given we are going to be following the same uh, the same conditions which have been given so the the first part they're saying that x plus 2 the values of x are supposed to be less than or equal to 1 okay so i'm going to start there i'm going to say this is going to be my x this is going to be my y 
So the first part is negative 1. So in this function, in this equation, if I replace negative 1 where there is x, what will be the value of y? Okay, because the, the, the condition here is saying that x is less than or equal to negative 1. So I need to start from negative 1. But at that point, since it is less than or equal to, the first point is going to be a closed one, meaning it is included. If it was x less than 1 or negative 1, I would have started with what? An open one, meaning it is not included. Okay, so here I'm going to start with that one. Then I'm going to say, um, if I put negative 1 in my first equation, I'm going to find that it's going to be negative 1 plus 2. So what is negative 1 plus 2? I'm going to get a 1. Okay, so I'm going to get uh, a 1. Then if I put negative 2, it's going to be negative, negative 2 plus 2 is going to give me a 0. So I'm going just to get three, um, uh, 3 numbers or 3 values of x. Then let's also put negative 3. If I put negative 3, I'm going to find negative 1. Now, from here what I'm going to do is uh, I'll go to my graph. Okay, The x values which I have is uh, I have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 allow me to put also negative 4 so i have these values here next i'll go to my y my y i have got negative 1 negative 2 i'm going to put all the way up to negative 3 that's all okay then again the first part here i'm going to put okay here i'm going to end on uh, just one for the first equation so i'm going to have negative 1 negative 2, negative 3, then here I've got 1. So let's now plot the first um, which we have. So what is negative 1? Negative 1, comma 1 is this point here. Okay, But at this point, we are saying that it is included because it is x is less than or equal to negative 1. So negative 1, comma 1 is included. So I'm going to put an, a closed one. So 1, comma 1 is going to be at this point. I'm going to put a crossed one, meaning it is included. Okay, I put that one. Next, I'm going to to go where there is negative two comma zero. So where is negative two comma zero? Negative two comma zero is this point here. Okay, then negative three comma one. Negative three is this one. One is here, so it's somewhere here. Meaning that my point here is going to start from this point. All the way going here that is my point so that is the first equation which we're going to have meaning for the first part I'm done for the first equation I'm done my sketching I'll go to the second one okay so what am I going to do in the second one the second one what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to have also uh, X and Y but this one is is saying the values of x are supposed to start from negative 1 all the way to 1, meaning that I've got negative 1 here, negative 1, 0, and the 1. That's all. That is the domain. So the domain for that one is just from negative 1. Negative 1 not included all the way from, from negative 1 not included to 1. So this is the domain which I've been given. Okay? So that is what we're going to use. Those are the values of x. So in this one, if I put negative 1, I'm going to find that my value of y is going to be 1. I've been given already here. So any value which is within the range of negative 1 all the way to 1 is going to, to give me 1. So if I put negative 1, it's going to give me 1. But it's not going to be included at that point. 0 is going to give me 1. 1 is going to give me 1. So meaning that the first point is not going to be included. And which point is that? Negative 1, 1. And negative 1, 1 is this point. So I'm going to put an open circle here to show that it is not included. Next, I'm going to say 0, 1. 0, 1 is this point. Okay, next is going to be 1, 1. So 1, I'm going to put 1 here. Okay, 1, 1 is going to be at this point. It's going to be at this point. Meaning that at, at this last part, it is not, or it is less than as well. So it is, it's going to be an open one. It's not included as well. Meaning that I need to put now the line joining these two points. I'm done that. So the second equation, that is my graph. That is my graph. Okay. Now from there, I'll go to the third one now. Okay. How do I go? How do I sketch that one? So I'm going to say that I'm going to have this x, y. 
So let's start now putting the numbers. So I have, they are saying that x is greater than or equal to 1. 1 is included. So I'm going to, if I put 1, 1 squared, where there's x, I put 1. 1 squared is going to give me 1. Let's put 2. 2 squared is going to give us what? 2 squared is going to give us um, a 4. Okay. Let's put 3. Okay. 3 squared is going to give us what? It's going to give us a, a 9. So what we're going to do, since this is 1, let's put here 2. Uh, we put here 4, then here let's put 9 because we don't have space. So I'm going to say that uh, this is going to be my 4, this is going to be my 9. Meaning that uh, from here now I can say 1 comma 1. But at this point 1 comma 1 is going to be included. So I'm going to put it inside there. Okay, so allow me to say this point here. Let me just say since it was open, I'm going to put an open one there. Okay. Then now, since this one is going to be closed, I'm going to put a closed one, starting from there. That is where it's starting from. Now, next point is 2 comma 4. So 2 comma 4, I'm going to put 2 here. And then I'm going to put 3 here. So 2 comma 4 is going to be this point. Okay. This point here is going to be 2 comma 4. Next is going to be 3 comma 9. 3 comma 9 is going to be somewhere here. Okay. This point. So... I need just to join these lines. So I join these lines. That is going to be my third one. So now this graph which I have is uh, the piecewise function which I have. This is the graph now. Okay. Now from this graph we can see that we can even find the domain. The overall domain of this function. We can see that the x values. We don't know where it is ending. So it's going to be all real numbers starting from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity that is going to be our domain because we don't know where it is ending that's why i'm putting the arrow these arrows simply mean that we don't know where it is ending okay so it can go all the way to positive infinity that is x all the way again to negative infinity so it's going to be uh the the domain is going to be all real numbers what of the range even the y values if we can check here the y values are not restricted as well. So the y values, as we can see, is starting from negative infinity as well, all the way to positive infinity. As simple as that. Okay. Now, the next question which we have to ask ourselves is, uh, what if we want to find f of negative 1? Okay. How, do, how are we going to find that? So f of negative 1, this is what we're going to have. Okay. So f of negative 1. So from these equations which we have here, we are going to choose the one which is telling us to say x is equal to what? Negative 1. So the first equation saying that x is less than or equal to negative 1, meaning that negative 1 is included. I'm going to get that equation. So I'm going to say that x plus 2. Okay. So f of negative 1 is going to be negative 1 plus 2. So what will be our f of negative 1? f of negative 1 is going to be negative 1 plus 2 is going to give me 1. So that is the answer for what? For, for part 1. Okay, cool. Now, let's, let's also find the second one. The second one is saying find f of 0. So we're going to choose the equation which is, telling, which is going to tell us to say x is what? 0. Okay. So what, which equation is that? So we have got f of 0. The first equation is saying that x is less than or equal to negative 1. Meaning that the numbers from negative 1 all the way to negative infinity. 0 is not included there. We can't, we can't get the uh, equation 1. Let's go to equation 2. Okay, Equation 2 is saying that negative 1 all the way to 1. But those two are not included. But in between there, there is 0. Meaning that that is the function which we are going to get. Okay, Meaning that f of 0 is going to give us what? 1. Because we don't have anything apart from 1 here. So f of 0 is going to be, um, is going to give us um, 1. That's all. Now the third one is saying f of 3. How can we find f of 3? Okay, so f of 3, this is what we're going to have. f of 3 is going to be, uh, which equation are we going to get? We can't get the, the, uh, the first equation because the first equation is saying that x plus 2 then x has to be less than or equal to negative 1. So we can't get that one. Second equation is saying negative 1 all the way to 1. 3 is not there. But the third equation is saying that x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Meaning that the numbers from negative 1 all the way to positive infinity. So 3 is going to be in that one. Meaning that we are going to say this is going to be x to a power 2. 
so f of to the power uh, f of 3 is going to be 3 squared so f of 3 is going to be 3 squared is going to give us 9 so that is it for that one okay so now let's say um we have a different we have got a different function let's see how we can solve it okay let's see how we can solve it so let's say we have got a different one and the same different one let's say um f of x is equal to okay so i will draw this um let's say zero that is um then we start from negative five all the way to negative five less than or equal to x then x has to be less than negative two okay now when i say negative five less than or equal to x then less than negative two i can put this in set interval notation so what it means there is that negative five is included comma negative two which is not included so what it means is same as x is greater than or equal to negative five at the same time x is less than negative two meaning that it's starting from negative five negative five is included all the way to what this but this is not included that is what it means so now what we're going to do here is um, um the second one let's say we have um negative x squared plus four comma let's put negative two less than or equal to x then let's say x is less than or equal to negative one so let's let's include both of them so let's say also here we have negative x then we have plus three comma let's say a two is less than x then x is less than or equal to five now let's sketch this we have to sketch and then we need to find um, one we need to find f of negative one again we are going to use the same one f of we need to find f of zero then the th third part we have to find f of three so first let's sketch the graph okay so sketching this one is not going to be complicated because um we know that we are going to have this okay that is what we're going to have let me have a nice one so here is my graph so what I'm going to do is I'll start with the first part I'll start with the first part so the first part we know that we are going to have x y so we have this now they are saying that the values are supposed to start from negative 5 all the way to negative 2 so I'll start with negative 5 if I put negative 5 the y value is going to be 0 next is going to be negative 4 negative 4 the y value is going to be 0 because we don't have any x value here meaning that that is the answer if I put negative 5 the answer is going to be 0 I put negative 4 the answer is going to be 0 I put negative 3 the answer is going to be 0 all the way up to negative 2 if I put negative 2 the answer is going to be 0 okay so now from there what I'm going to do is I'm going to start now putting this I'm going to have my negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. So I'm going to put here negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. So they are saying that it is starting from negative negative 5 comma 0, but negative 5 is included, so I'm going to put a closed one. Okay. It is included because it is less than or equal to. So negative 5 is included next negative 4 comma 0 is this point negative 3 comma 0 is this point negative 2 comma 0 it is also included no 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 it is less than 2 so it's not included i'm going to put an open one there so my line is going to start from here all the way to this point so that is going to be my first part okay now next i'll go to the second part so i'm going to have this as well x y now let's put the values they're saying that from negative one all the way to one so we've got negative one mm, or negative two sorry negative two all the way to one so negative two we have got negative one zero all the way to one so in this equation is x negative x squared 
plus 4. So if I put negative 2, now remember when you have something like this, this is this. What it when you are plugging in the values, what it means is that it's going to be negative, then negative 2 squared plus 4. So this is going to give us, inside there is going to be 4. But 4 there is negative, outside it's going to be negative 4. So negative 4 plus 0 is going to give us a 0. That is also very, very important. Don't make a mistake where you are going to say, you plug in 2, then you think as if it's going to be positive. No, because negative is outside the x. Okay, so we're going to have another one which is going to be... Um, it's going to be negative x squared plus 4. So if I put negative, then I have negative 1, i squared is plus 4. It's going to be 1 squared is going to be negative 1 squared is going to be 1. So there's negative outside, so it's negative 1 plus 4, which is going to be what? It's going to give me uh, 3. Okay, so I'm going to put my 3 here. What if I put 0? If I put 0, I'm expecting to have a 4 because it's going to be 0 squared, this is 0. 0 plus 4, we have 4. Next, we have 1. Okay, so the first point is going to be included. It is included. Even the, th the last point is going to be included. So the last point is going to be 1. If I put 1 there, it's going to be 1 square. So it's going to be negative 1, comma. I'm going to have... Um, I'm going to have what? If I have uh, 1 squared, it's going to be... It's going to give me a 3. Okay. It's going to give me a 3. So I'm going to start now from there to say the first point is included. So I'll, I'll come there and say my first point, I'm going to have this, this is included, which is negative 2 comma 0 is this point. So I'm going to put it inside. It is included, yes. Okay, it is included. Next, negative 1 comma 3. Allow me to put uh, 1 here. Let me put 2, I put 3 here. Let me put 4, I put 5. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So next point is, um, the first point was uh, negative 2, comma 1. That is the first, or negative 2, comma 0. That is the first point which I've shaded it. The next is negative 1, comma 3. It's this point here. Then we have 0, comma 4. Okay which is this point. Next we have uh, 1 comma 3. So I'll put 1 here, 3 is here. So it is starting from here. Okay. Let me use different color. It is starting from this point or they were there then here. But the last point is also included so I need to put a sh I need to shade it. So that is the second part. Now the third part, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say, mm, I have x again, I have y, so I have this. So I'm going to have, starting from 2, 2 is not included, so the first point is going to be open, okay, so 2 is not included. If I put 2 there, what's going to be my answer? Negative 2 plus 3, I'm going to have a 1, okay, I'm going to have a 1. Next I'm going to put it. A three is supposed to end on five three. So if I put three there, negative three plus three is going to give me a zero. Next, I'm talking about this equation here. That's why I'm plugging in the values. So now, um, next I'm going to have what? I'm going to have a four. If I plug in four here, negative four plus a, this one I'm going to have a negative one. Okay. Next I'm going to have a five. But at this point where this five is going to be included because it is less than or equal to. So if I put 5, it's going to be negative 5 plus 3. So what is negative 5 plus 3? Negative 5 plus 3 is going to give me a negative 2. So I'm done. Now from there, the x values are supposed to go all the way up to 5. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let me even put 6. So I have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. As simple as that. Next, what I'm going to do is... Uh, I'm going now to plot this. So le allow me to put negative 1 here. Then I put negative 2. Negative 1, negative 2. So I'm going to have um, 2, comma 1. Okay. So 2, comma 1 is this point. But at this point, it is open. It is not here. It's going to be open. Next is 3, comma 0 is this point. 
3 comma 0 is this point next 4 comma negative 1 4 is this point negative 1 is somewhere here okay another one is 5 comma negative 2 5 is here negative 2 is somewhere here so our point will be here this is going to be our point okay so don't forget to put the arrows because we don't know where it is ending so this is the sketching it will be our f of we start with f of negative 1 okay so f of negative 1 which function are we going to get let's start with ne uh, the first function so the first function saying negative 5 um, negative 5 is less than or equal to um, x then x is less than negative 2 negative 1 is not in that range so the first equation has failed let's go to the second one negative 2 less than or equal to x then x is less than or equal to what to 1 meaning that that one is going to work because it is from negative 2 all the way to 1 so negative 1 is in between so we're going to get that function it's going to be negative x squared plus 4 now we plug in the values negative 1 so we're going to have negative negative 1 squared plus 4 so what will be our f of negative 1 so f of negative 1 is going to be negative 1 squared is going to give us a 1 so we're going to have negative 1 now plus 4 because of the negative which is outside so f of negative 1 we're going to have a 3 so this is going to be the answer for f of negative 1 okay now what of f of 0 which one are we going to get let's see so f of um f of 0 let, let's check the first one so the first one is saying uh from negative 5 all the way to negative 2 0 is not in that range this uh, the second one is saying from negative 2 all the way to positive 1 meaning that 0 is in that range so we're going to get that one again so it's going to be negative x squared plus 4 so f of 0 is going to be then we have the 0 squared plus 4 so our answer is going to be f of 0 is going to be 0 plus 4 is going to give us a 4 so that will be the answer for f of 0 okay so that is also very very important you knowing to say which equation am I going to use if I've been given f of 2 f of what yeah so f of 3 now which one do we expect we expect the third one the third one that's why I say 2 all the way to 5 meaning that 3 is in that range so it's going to be I'm going to get this equation okay so f of 3 is going to be negative I'm going to replace where this x will place to what 3 this plus 3 so f of 3 is going to be equal to 0 as simple as that so this is what you need to know under piecewise function so let's talk about uh, even and uh, odd functions so how do you know that a function is um, even or odd so a function is said to be an uh, to be even if f of uh, negative x is equal to f of x meaning a function is what even and the function is said to be a uh, odd function if f of x if f of negative x is equal to negative f of x okay then we are going to say that this is an, if, uh, an odd function so if you discover to say the function is not giving us this and at the same time it's not giving us this meaning that function is neither of the two is neither even nor odd so we just say the function is neither okay so there we go let's have some examples okay so let's say we have got a function which is uh, f of x is equal to uh, 3x squared minus 4x to the power 4 let's 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 see if this function is odd even or neither okay so there we go so a function like we said a function is said to be even if f of negative x is equal to f of x so if we plug in negative where there's x and we get the original function then that function is even but if we plug in the value of x with negative x and we get negative f of x then the function is odd okay so for example we have got an example here so uh, this is going to be f of negative x is going to be equal to so it's going to be 3 negative x squared minus 4 
negative x to a power 4 okay so we are saying that uh, this is going to be f of negative x is going to be equal to negative x squared is going to give us x uh, x squared so it's going to be 3x squared minus um, x to a power 4 is going to be x to a power 4 so we are going to have this so as you can see we are getting f of negative x then we are getting the original function which is going to be equal to f of x so since f of negative x is equal to f of x then this is an even function okay so this is how you prove to say it is an odd or even now let's have another example let's say we have f of x is equal to 3x squared minus 4 okay this is what we're from having let's have this f of x is equal to um x to the power 3 plus 1 okay so we know that for a function to be an even an even f of negative x has to be equal to f of x and for a function to be an odd f of negative x has to be equal to negative f of x so let's see if this function is even or odd function okay so we're going to say f of negative x is equal to we're going to have negative x to the power 3 plus 1 so f of negative x is going to be equal to negative x plus 1 so let's try to factor out a negative okay so f of negative x is going to be equal to negative x then again we're going to have negative here negative 1 so as we can see um, f of x negative x is not equal to neg this f of x so this function is not even what of odd okay odd unless if we have got a negative outside then inside here it's supposed to give us the original function but at the same time this function f of negative x is not equal to negative f of x so this function is not an even at the same time it's not an odd so this function is neither as simple as that okay so let's have another example let's say we have um, a function which is um, f over um, f of x is equal to uh, 6x to the power 3 minus 5x so let's say we are saying that for a function to be an even f of x f of negative x has to be equal to f of x and for a function to be an odd Mm, f of x has to be equal to negative f of x okay so let's now see what of f what's going to be our f of negative x so f of negative x we are going to have 6 x to the power 3 minus 5 negative x here okay so what are we going to have f of negative x we are going to have mm, negative x to the power 3 is going to give us negative x so it's going to be negative 6 x to the power to the power 3 the minus we've got negative negative is going to give us a positive 5x so let's factor out the negative f of negative x is going to be equal to negative then we're going to have x to the power 3 minus 5x so as we can see we have got a negative here so we've got f of negative x is equal to negative f of x now inside here we need to get the function which is exactly the same as the original function if we factor out negative then we're going to conclude that this since this is negative f of negative x is equal to negative f of x then this is an odd function okay let's have another example so let's say we have um, f of x is equal to uh, 1 minus x squared let's see if this function is even or odd so let's not forget for a function to be an even f of negative x has to be equal to f of x for a function to be an odd f of negative x has to be equal to negative f of x as simple as that so let's see so we have got f of negative x is going to be 1 minus negative x squared so we're going to have uh, f of negative x is going to be equal to 1 minus negative x squared is going to give us x squared 
so this is giving us exactly the original function so since f of negative x is equal to f of x then we can conclude to say this is an even function as simple as that okay so let's have another example let's have another question f of x is equal to x squared minus x let's see so f of negative x is going to be equal to um, negative x squared minus negative x so this is going to give us f of x is equal to um, neg x squared we're going to have x times negative x times negative x we're going to have this okay so f of negative x is not equal to f of x so this is not an even at the same time f of negative x is not equal to negative f of is not equal to negative f of x so it's not an odd not odd therefore this function is neither so this function is neither is neither odd um no even okay let's have another example so let's say we have um f of x is equal to uh, 3x squared let me put yeah let me put x squared then plus 2x minus 1 so let's see for a function to be an odd f of negative x has to be equal to f of x let's not forget that point very very important at the same time for a function to be um an to be an odd function f of negative x has to be equal to negative f of x so let's see so f of negative x is going to be 3 negative x squared plus 2 negative x minus 1 okay so f of negative x is going to be equal to 3x squared because negative x squared is going to be x squared minus this is 2 times negative x going to be 2x minus 1 okay now um this is not giving us exactly the same as the original function okay so the original function is this there is a plus here and here there is a minus so it's not the same now let's try so th since it's not the same it's not an even let's see if it's an odd let's factor out the negative so if i factor out the negative i'm going to have negative 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 or plus 1 but again I'm having some uh, changes here negative and then here which is not the same so this again is not the same as uh, the original one so this function is uh, not uh, an, an odd function therefore it's neither so if you discover to say it's not an odd and it's not an even then the function is neither okay so now let's have another one <coughs> let's say we have f of x we have f of x is equal to x plus 1 over x is this function even or odd okay so f of negative x is going to be negative x plus 1 over negative x again so this is going to be negative x is going to be equal to we're going to have negative x this negative there we're going to have negative 1 over x now this is not the exact as what we have there therefore it's not an even function let's try to factor out the negative okay so if i try to factor out the negative i'm going to find that i'm going to have negative x here plus 1 over x now we can see that what we have inside here it's the same as the original function therefore since f of negative x is equal to negative f of x then this function is odd as simple as that so this is how you know to say this function is odd or even okay now let's have the last uh, example let's say we have f of x is equal to the modulus of x okay now since we know that any value which is going to come out from here it's going to be positive now we are saying that if if this is giving us this then this is an even if this is giving us negative f of x then this is an odd function so now let's see if this is going to be even odd or neither so we have got f of 
negative x is going to be equal to negative x. Now we know that in modulus we are going to come up with only positive values, so this is going to give us a positive x. Okay. Now if this is positive x, we can see that this has given us the what the original function. Okay. Therefore, this is the an um an even function. As simple as that. So this is how you know or this is how you determine to say the function is an odd, even or neither. Okay. We are going to talk about completing square method. Okay. So completing square method, we are going to have a function which is in form of f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Now the first step here is we have to factor out a. Okay. So if I factor out a, I'm going to remain with a x squared plus b over a x plus c over a. Okay. So I the first point here is you always factor out him a. The reason why we are factoring out a, we want our um, our turning point to be in a form of a open brackets x plus p. Okay. Then we have squared plus q. Now that's the reason why we are factoring out what in the a. Okay, so we will keep on bringing the a there. So now the next step here is you get the coefficient of this x which is here. Now you do times half. Okay, what is the half of b over a? So you say b over a times half, which is going to be b over 2a. Okay, so this is going to be a x squared plus b over a x plus now this is going to be b over 2a now this has to be squared the same thing which i've done here i'm going to say minus the same thing now b over 2a i also have to be squared the reason why i'm doing this is uh, if i do this minus this i'll go back to my original equation okay then i'm going to to put now this so this is going to be plus now uh, i have c over a then i do this so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to ignore this. So now if the, the moment I ignore this, I know that this is squared. This is also squared. Then it can be written in this form. It can be written in a. I have x plus b over 2a. Then I do this. I put a squared. I have not changed anything. So I'm going to say minus. This one I can say b times b is going to give us a, a b squared. Then this is going to give us a uh, four a squared. This is going to be plus c over a. So I have this. Now from here, what I'm going to do now is I need to to make this as one thing. What I mean there is uh, I can get rid of this on top here. I can say that I have negative b squared over 4a squared plus c over a. The lowest common denominator is going to be uh, 4a squared. So this there is going to be 1. One time that one we are going to get a negative b squared plus uh, a here we are going to get a 4a. 4a times that one we are going to get a 4ac. Meaning that I'm supposed to replace this with the, what I have there. So I'm going to have a open brackets. I have this. Okay, I square it, then I have minus b squared plus uh, I have 4 ac, everything divided by what? 4a squared. And I have this. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to distribute now a. So, if I distribute a, you're going to see that this is what we're going to have. Let me first get rid of this. So what we're going to have here is um, we're going to have a x plus b over 2a then it is squared so minus if i put this this is going to be cancelled with one a down there so we, we are going to remain with negative b squared plus 4 ac over 4a so what it means there is that whenever I'm trying to find this part, we are trying to come up with this. A x plus p 
squared plus p. So whenever I'm trying to come up with p, meaning that this p is the same as b over 2a, okay, then in my q is the same as I get this. Okay, I get this. So now it is the same thing. Now, whenever, we, so this is going to be our turning point. Our turning point now is going to be this. So our turning point here is going to be our turning point is going to be b over 2a comma negative b squared okay then we are going to have plus 4ac over 4c so this is going to be our turning point then now whenever we're trying to find the line of symmetry we just equate this part which is inside equal to 0 and find the value of x that is the line of symmetry so let's see let's say we have a question we have this they are saying using completing square method to find the turning point x and y intercept and sketch the graph and also find the line of symmetry so we have the first question here which is saying um, so we have this one so the first point we said is to factor out the a okay so if i factor out a here which is going to be three I'm going to have x squared plus here I'm going to have 2x minus here I'm going to have um, 4 over 3 now from here what else do we have we say do we need first now to find the half of this of this part here so I'm going to find the half of that one so we're going to mean with this we're going to have 2x half of this is 1 so we say plus is going to be 1 now we square it the same thing is going to be minus 1 now we square it again minus 4 over 3 and then I do this now from here I know that I'm supposed to ignore this I'm going to get this part and this part only so I'm going to have 3 x plus 1 I square it minus 1 squared is going to be 1 minus 4 over 3 this is what we have now if we have negative 1 minus 4 over 3 it's the same as we have negative 3 over 3 minus 4 over 3 because negative 3 over 3 is negative 1 so this is going to give us negative 7 over 3 so this part is going to be 3 then x plus 1 squared minus 7 over 3 okay so I have this now I can distribute now 3 okay I'll get rid of this I can now distribute 3 so if I distribute 3 I'm going to have 3 x plus 1 squared minus it's going to be 3 7 over 3 now 3 and 3 can go okay 3 and 3 can go we are going to have this minus 7 3 and 3 will go we're going to have this so meaning that what we have here is uh, in the form of a x plus p plus q so we can see that our turning point here is going to be our turning point here is going to be uh, what we get here is uh, we get the opposite of this okay so in short what I'm trying to say is we equate this equal to 0 so for x x is going to be negative 1 so that is the value of x so we have negative 1 comma negative 7 these are the turning point okay now from there what else do we do we know we can see that negative 1 comma negative 7 that is our turning point that's where the graph is going to to turn now from here we can also find the what the x and y intercept now to find the line of symmetry this is the line of symmetry you just equate what is inside equal to 0 and find the value of x that is the line of symmetry okay now to find the x intercept or let's start with the y intercept to find the y intercept uh, if you want to find the y intercept intercept set x equal to 0 meaning that in this equation where there's x let's put 0 so our y is going to be negative 4 okay so we're going to have 0 comma negative 4 that will be our y intercept to find the x intercept same we, we equate um, y to be equal to 0 
So let's just put this here. We are saying that our turning point, our turning point is negative one comma negative seven. What else do we know? We also know the y-intercept. Okay, the y-intercept. The y-intercept we have found that is zero comma in x zero, then negative four. To find the x-intercept, what we have to do is set y equal to zero then we are going to find the x-intercept meaning that what we have there is we have uh, 3x squared plus 6x minus 4 is going to be equal to zero so for x this is not factorizable what are we going to do we are going to use the bus method so we're going to use x is equal to negative b this b squared minus 4a see everything divided by 2a <coughs> So we have x is equal to, our b is uh, 6, so we're going to have negative 6, plus or minus, we're going to have b squared is going to be 6 squared minus 4, a is 3, mm, c is negative 4, so you have this, 2 times 3. So x is going to be equal to negative 6, plus or minus, uh, inside here we're going to have 36, then this is going to be plus, so we have 12, and then we have 12 times 4 so 12 times 4 which is uh, 48 so we have plus 48 here then you have everything divided by what? 6 okay so we can get rid of this the top part here okay then now uh, what else we can see that uh, 48 plus um, 36, we are getting 84. So we're going to have x is going to be equal to this. We're going to have 84 over 6. Now, we don't have the square root. The square root of 24, we don't have the square root of 24. But if you use the calculator, you can find the square root of 24. But now the issue is, um, if you're not allowed to use the calculators, you can leave your answer inside. So here, I'm going to use a calculator. Okay, so we're going to say that what is the square root of 84? Square root of 84 is 9.17. Okay, so we're going to have x, but if you're not allowed to use a calculator, you can leave your answer in sides. So it's going to be, we're going to have 9.17. Everything divided by 6. So we're going to have two values of x. x is going to be equal to negative 6 plus 9. 0.17 over 6 or x will be equal to negative 6 minus 9.17 over 6 so what will be the values of x now when y is equal to 0 so we're going to have x will be equal to we have negative 6 plus 9.17 okay so I divide this by 6 I'm getting 0. Uh, I'm getting a 0 0.53 0 0.53 I've just rounded it off then another one is x is equal to negative 6 minus 9.17 I divide it by 6 I'm getting a negative 2.53 so now we have the x intercept When the y is 0, we have 0 0.53 comma 0 and also negative 2 comma negative 2.53 comma 0. So these are the x intercept and those are what? The y intercept. Now how do we find how do we sketch now the graph? So it is very 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 simple now since we have everything, it's just a matter of us plugging in the values here. So we have this and this. Now the value of a remember that when the value of a is less than zero our graph is going to be at its maximum okay it's going to to cave like this if the value of a is greater than zero like in this case our value of a is greater than zero the graph is going to have its minimum point we're going to have this that is very very important so before you even graph uh, you, you even sketch the graph you'll be able to know that the graph is going to be at its maximum or minimum so if the a is less than zero just know that the graph is going to be like this okay 
when the a is greater than 0 the graph will, will have its minimum point that is also very very important now we have the values we can see that we have let's say we have a 1 here a 1 a 2 and a 3 so we have 1 2 3 so here let's also have um, a negative 1 negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 okay so we have negative 1 neg 2 neg 3 so we have a 1 2 3 1 2 3 here we're going to have negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 negative 4 because the turning point is at se negative 7 I need to go all the way to negative 7 negative 5 negative 6 negative 7 here now what we have to know is um, that is our turning point negative 1 comma negative 7 is this point here okay then we have the x the y intercept where the graph is going to cut is negative 4 so this is our negative 4 here okay when the graph rests there it's going to turn at negative 4 in the y axis now in the x axis we have uh, 0 comma negative 0 comma uh, 5.3 which is somewhere here okay then we have also negative 2.53 which is somewhere here okay comma zero so meaning that the graph is supposed to come from here it goes all the way to this point then it rests here then it goes where there's four then it goes there so that is our graph of f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 6x minus 4 now the line of symmetry we said it is at 1 negative x is equal to negative 1 so this is our line of symmetry you just put this so that is our line of symmetry at x is equal to negative what negative 1 that is also very very important so this is how you can find the x intercept the y intercept the turning point and also the line of symmetry and also how to sketch the graph using the completing square method yeah that is very very important so we also have a question question 2 here which we can just uh, solve you can pause the video and work it out and see the answer which you're going to come up with okay so we have the second question which is saying um, f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x remember we said is to factor out x sorry to factor out the value of a so in this in this case a is 1 so if you want you can just put 1 then you have x squared minus 4x uh, we don't have anything here is 0 okay so we need to find the half of this that is also very very important so we have 1 so we have x squared minus 4 x now it's going to be plus the half of this what is the half of negative 4 it is negative 2 so I'm going to put a negative what I'm going to put a negative 2 there okay so I'm going to put a negative 2 I'm going to put a negative i square minus I need to get the same thing I also square it then I have this okay so what we're going to have here now we're going to have one we're going to have we ignore this that's what we said we ignore this so we just get uh, this and this okay so we're going to have x minus 2 squared minus negative 2 squared is 4 so we're going to have this meaning that we have now 1 x minus 2 then 4 now to find the turning point we say that the turning point I can get rid of this I need I, I no longer need that the turning point this value is supposed to be the opposite okay so x minus 2 is equal to 0 find the value of x that will be our first turning point the turning point in x axis so it's going to be 2 comma what negative 4 this one you just get the way it is if it is negative just get negative if it is positive just get positive but this part here if this is negative get a positive if it is positive get a negative in short just get what is inside set them equal to 0 then solve for x at the same time that is the line of symmetry okay then now what we need to find is uh, we need to find the x and y intercept how do we find the x and y intercept okay if it is factorizable if I want to find the, the y-intercept what I need to do is uh, to find the y-intercept 
set x equal to 0 okay that is y intercept x has to be equal to 0 meaning that f of 0 is going to be 0 squared minus 4 then 0 so this is going to give us 0 comma 0 okay so that is our y intercept our y intercept is 0 comma 0 now to find the x intercept set y equal to 0 okay that will be our y has to be equal to 0 this is our, our y our x intercept so it's going to be x squared minus 4x is equal to 0 i can factor out x x minus 4 is equal to 0 so x will be equal to 0 at the same time x minus 4 will be equal to 0 x is going to be equal to 4 there is going to be 4 so we have two value two uh, x intercept so we have x intercept which is going to be um, 0 comma 0 we are going to have also um, uh, 4 comma 0 after finding this the line of symmetry we know already that is going to be 2 because we have to set that one equal to 0 so the line of symmetry line of symmetry is going to be at x is equal to so to sketch the graph now we are going to see that this is going to be like this okay let's put it in this side okay at the same time we know that our a was greater than zero it was one actually so the graph is supposed to be having its own minimum that's why it is negative this part here okay so before you even graph you even sketch the graph you you know that the graph is supposed to to, to be like this or it's supposed to be like this that is also very very important so now what we're going to have to do here is that we're going to have um, our values here we're going to have one two three four five so one two three four five then i'm going to have my values here one two three uh, 4 5 okay so negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 negative 4 negative 5 so here I'm going to have 1 2 3 4 this is the y axis this is the x axis okay so I'm going to have 1 2 3 4 I'm going to have negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 negative 4 that is just okay negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 negative 4 now from here I need to find the the y the y intercept is 0 comma 0 0 comma 0 is this point then x intercept foot again we have 0 comma 0 so it's going to be at the same point okay then the turning point is 2 all the way to 4 so it's this point here that's the turning point that's the turning point that's where the graph is going to turn now we have also the line of symmetry is at the same point then you have uh, 4 comma 0 is this point so the graph is supposed to come here when it comes here it rests then it goes there so this is my graph of f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x the line of symmetry is at this point is at uh, 2 comma negative 4 so this is at 2 comma negative 4 so you can say that uh, this point is at uh, negative or oh, is at 2 comma 4 2 comma negative 4 so this is how you go up with um, the completing of square method we are going to talk about completing square method which involves modulus so how do we sketch now we have got a question which is saying complete the square of each of the following quadratic functions hence sketch its graph indicating the turning point and the intercept and write down the equation of its line of symmetry so as you can see part one has got modulus but there's no negative part two there's modulus but there's negative i think if you manage to check the previous video where we introduced the uh, computing square method we talked about how to find the line of symmetry how to find the x and y intercept and also how to find the what the turning point now here one just to talk about what if you have been given the modulus how do you sketch so let's talk about uh, how to use remainder theorem to find the remainder so I have two questions with me the first question is saying um, 2x 
to the power 3 minus 3x squared plus 4x plus 5 then they are saying if it is divisible by this 